If you're planning on doing a detox, a parasite purge, or you have unwanted or unknown symptoms that you don't know what's causing it, and you've tried everything, you gotta watch this because I'm gonna shed some light on an unsung hero, especially one that is so closely associated with our whole body's drainage and detoxification process. In this video, I'm gonna be bringing to light the importance of our lymphatic system. Now you might be thinking, what? What do you mean lymphatic system? No. Nobody really talks about that. Well, you're right. Nobody really talks about it, but we should be because of how important it is and because of how interlinked it is with our other drainage systems like liver, gut, and kidneys. Because guess what? If our lymph isn't working, neither will those three organ systems. So what is the lymphatic system? I want you to actually think of the lymphatic system as the mirror to the circulatory system. Our circulatory system is made up of a bunch of vessels that delivers oxygenated blood and nutrients to every tissue, cell, gland, and organ in our body. And it does so via the heart, right? The heart is pumping, which is ultimately pumping the blood everywhere. Now, I said it's the mirror to the circulatory system. There's one thing you gotta know about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. So we're gonna have to do something a little differently. We don't actually have to think about our heart pumping blood, right? Well, we do have to think about our lymphatic system moving lymph. Now, what is lymph? Well, lymph actually is the waste products of cellular metabolism, meaning when blood brings oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood to every tissue, cell, gland, organ in our body, what our cells do is it takes those nutrients and it makes energy. And we use that energy for everything, whether it be digestion, absorption of nutrients, contracting muscles, thinking, making hormones, healing, replacing cells. Everything we do, we need energy to do it. And so we got to make sure that our blood is full of all the good stuff. But what happens is the leftover fluid that doesn't get sucked back up into the veins that's sitting between the cells. You may have heard of a term called interstitial space before. Really, all that means is the space between cells. What happens is if that fluid sits there, that waste fluid from cellular metabolism, it's gonna break down the surrounding tissue. So think about it this way. We have blood circulating in our whole body, head to our toes. If fluid, waste fluid gets left over and left behind and it drives inflammation, inflammation is one of those things that's gonna break us down. And the longer it's there, the more damage that's gonna happen. So the lymphatic system is actually there in place to suck up that leftover fluid that was left behind and return it to the circulatory system, all the while filtering out the toxins and waste products so that the fluid levels in your blood can remain constant. If it didn't, guess what would happen? We didn't have the lymphatic system. We'd end up with swollen body parts everywhere, not to mention a drop in blood pressure, and eventually that would be our demise. That would be the end of us. So thank goodness for the lymphatic system. Now with that being said though, I did mention something really important, that the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. So that means that if it doesn't have a pump, how do we get the lymph fluid from our toes or even our fingers back to the blood supply? Well, it does so via two mechanisms. Smooth muscle contraction is one. So our lymphatic vessels have a lining of smooth muscle, which ultimately contracts involuntarily. Now, with that being said though, we do rely heavily upon the muscles surrounding it, along with the arteries flowing alongside of it, causing that pulsation or the contraction of muscles around it to squeeze the lymph fluid up back to the circulatory system. So it actually, all of our lymphatic fluid drains above our collarbones called the termini. Everything, toes, fingers, head, breast tissue, it all drains above the collarbone. So we gotta make sure that we're moving that lymphatic fluid. Now, what does the lymphatic system do? Like, what is the purpose behind it other than maintaining fluid balance? Because that was one very important thing. So maintaining fluid balance and removing the waste fluid or the waste products left behind from the blood supply. The other thing it does is it's a huge immune component. So not only do we have lymph vessels, but we also have lymph 
nodes. I want you to think of it this way. The lymph vessels are like hallways and the lymph nodes are doors. If the lymph nodes are closed, if the doors are closed, we can't walk through that hallway, through that door to the next room if that door is closed, right? We have to have the ability to open the door. So the lymph nodes are kind of like security checkpoints. Think of like at an airport. In order for you to go from the check-in counter to your flight, you got to go through a security checkpoint. Well, that security checkpoint is your lymph node. And what it's doing is it's scanning everything that's going through. It's scanning all the people, it's scanning all the luggage to make sure that it's safe. And if it's safe, it lets you through. If it views it as a threat or a problem, like you forgot you had a water bottle full of water in your backpack, it's going to flag you and pull you aside because it views it as a threat. Same thing happens in the lymph node. It's going to flag it and pull it aside to figure out what it is. So it's not also going to pull in and bring in immune system response like macrophages, lymphocytes, in order to break down any threats so that it doesn't get returned to the circulatory system and then have free range of your body. Super cool, huh? So immune system is a huge component of the lymphatic system. And then the third component is absorption and circulation of both fatty acids and fat soluble vitamins from digestion. So from the food we eat, the fat soluble vitamins and fatty acids get absorbed into the lymph, which then gets returned to the circulatory system for distribution to all of our tissue glands and cells. So three very important functions of the lymphatic system. So if our lymphatic fluid, if our lymphatic system isn't working properly, it's either dealing with a chronic infection, it's overtired, it's not taking care of it, or it's stagnant, kind of like think of like a stagnant pond. If the water's not flowing, it becomes gross, right? It gets thick and there's lack of oxygen, there's lack of viability. Same thing can happen in our lymphatic system. If it becomes stagnant and things can't flow and they're not flowing, it's going to get real gross and real nasty and it's going to make us sick. So we got to make sure that the lymphatic fluid is flowing and draining, which remember, we physically have to be moving in order for our lymph fluid to move and drain. Now, there's really three big components to our lymphatic system. The lymph vessels and lymph nodes, like I mentioned. Then there's another system called the malt. Malt is the mucoid or mucus associated lymphoid tissue. Big fancy word, all that means is any mucus layer that we have in our body is going to have lymphoid tissues. It's going to house an immune response should we be exposed to something. So some examples would be our tonsils, our nose, our gut has Peyer's patches. It would also be our appendix is part of that. I know what you might be thinking, but our appendix, it's a useless organ. It's actually not. It's part of the lymphatic system and it does have a function, but unfortunately many of us get it removed. So the malt is very important because anything, our skin is actually part of it too, anything that we get exposed to an infection, a bacteria, a virus, a parasite, it's going to send the immune system to respond. Bond. That is so important because the sooner it can respond, the sooner it can get it taken care of. Now, the other component of our lymphatic system is called the glymphatic system, and that's found in our brain. Super cool. Our brain has its own lymphatic system because it's so important for our overall function and day-to-day -day activity, right? Like think of everything that our brain controls. The downside to the glymphatic system is that it only drains at night. We're not moving at night, right? Like ideally we're sleeping. And we actually have to get into a deep sleep in order for our brain to drain. So if we're not getting good sleep and we're not getting deep sleep, our brain's not draining and we may see symptoms of that such as brain fog, tired, moody, cranky, forgetting. All of those things could be associated with your brain not actually being able to clear the waste products from the day before. And the problem with not being able to clear waste products, and this goes for anywhere in the body, is it also means that it's not going to be able to deliver the fluid that we need in order to rebalance or repurpose the fluid so we're not constantly having to remake more blood. Now, 
couple things that you got to know when it comes to the lymphatic system outside of what I've already talked about. There are some things that will cause individuals to have more complications with their lymphatic system. Some of those would be things like having surgeries and removing lymph nodes. Could be removing your tonsils and adenoids. It could be removing lymph nodes in your armpit or your breast tissue or your groin. When we remove part of the lymphatic system, the whole body has to compensate and figure out, okay, how are we going to drain the lymphatic fluid in that area? Surgeries can actually pose other issues as well, such as scars and adhesions. If we have scars and adhesions, it's going to absolutely prevent our ability to drain and move that lymphatic fluid causing stagnation of the lymph fluid which is already waste products to become even more thick and gross ultimately. So if you're planning on doing any type of detox, any type of parasite purge, or dealing with a chronic infection, or you have unknown symptoms that you just don't know what the heck is causing them, I'm going to highly encourage you to look into your lymphatic system because of how widespread the lymphatic system is and how important it is for our overall function. If you like this kind of content and you want to learn more about drainage pathways and what you can do at home, be sure to subscribe because this channel is going to be all about drainage, detox, and supporting it at home. And I hope to make it super easy and simple for you to understand because what I know for myself to be true is when I understand something, I'm more likely to going to do it. And I want to make sure that we're all supporting our drainage pathways so that we can live happy, healthy, and vibrant lives. Thanks for being here. Happy draining.